I swear there will be vlogmas videos that are actually filmed in decent lighting when my brain is not totally mush but that day is not today. Hey guys, in today's Vlogmas edition of Year of Miyazaki, we're going to be talking about From Up on Poppy Hill, which was written by Hayao Miyazaki and Keiko Niwa, and was directed by Goro Miyazaki, Miyazaki's son. Now this one was originally released in 2011 under the Japanese title Kokuriko Zaka Kara, and was based on a manga or serialized comic of the same title. Now, I wasn't a huge fan of Goro Miyazaki's first Studio Ghibli film, which you guys will know if you watched my uh, Tales from Earthsea discussion video, but I'm really happy to report that I actually really, really enjoyed this one, and I think that I can say it rounds out my like top five favorite Studio Ghibli films. So yes, I will get to why I loved it so much in a second, but first, what is the film actually about? So Up on Poppy Hill is set in 1963 in a harbor town called Yokohama and follows a uh, high school student named Umi Matsuzaki who lives in a boarding house. Umi's mother is a professor who is currently working in the United States and her father was a sailor who died in the Korean War. So it falls to Umi to not only care for her two younger siblings and her grandmother, but to uh, run the guest house and take care of all of the ladies who happen to be staying there. She cooks and cleans and goes to school and other than that doesn't really have much time to do anything for herself. But one thing she does do every single morning is go out to the garden and raise a set of signal flags to communicate with the ships passing in the harbor. So while Umi tends to be more serious and more of a responsible, family-oriented type person, she goes to a high school with a massively thriving uh, student club culture. They have a whole separate building that they call the Latin Quarters where every single club has their own little headquarters. This whole story is set against the background of Japan prepping for the 1964 Tokyo Olympics and even in a town like Yokohama, there's this real sense of out with the old and in with the new. The clubhouse, for example, is a very old building. It is not very well maintained. The boys never clean and it's 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 kind of a mess. And so the school board decides that they are going to demolish it in favor of building some shiny new buildings. Now the boys who run all of the campus clubs are super anti that. And one day at school, Umi and her friends are witness to a very crazy stunt in which a boy jumps off of the roof to prove how how much he w is willing to invest in saving this building. This boy is Shun Kazama who runs the school newspaper and all of the girls immediately fall in love. They think he was so courageous and brave and heroic and Umi doesn't fall for it. She's like, that was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Why the heck did you do that, you idiot? However, Umi's sister is not free of this charming boy's influence and she forces Umi to go into the clubhouse with her to get a picture of him signed. And that is where Umi and Shun Kazama meet for the first time and where a connection sparks. Although she's never really had time to do anything fun or extracurricular for herself, Umi uh, offers to help out with the newspaper and Shun readily accepts. And it's not long after that Umi finds herself swept up in the movement to help save the clubhouse and all that it stands for for the students. And I want to just leave it at that because there are a couple of really great twists in the plot that I would not want to spoil for you guys, but I will say that this is a utterly beautiful film. It's a great coming of age story. It's a story of young love. It's a story of blossoming intellect and really discovering what you can do in your uh, community, like what kind of a social impact you can have even as a young person. As a film set in 1963, I think this is a really interesting look at Japanese society on a couple of different levels. The first definitely being that you can see how, although this is Japan on the brink of modernization, of full modernization, if you will, um, they still are very much affected by World War II and by the Korean War. And um, those are kind of scars within families that won't go away even though the world is changing. On another level, I think this gives a really interesting portrait of gender roles in 1960s Japan. Like I said, it's the boys on campus who run all of the clubs. They're the one who have 
occupied the clubhouse and who have let it go to ruin. And it's actually the girls who come in and save the day by saying, we know how to save this place. We're gonna save it by cleaning and fixing it up. So yes, you can see really distinct traditional uh, gender roles. You see the men as the educated, um, the men as the intellectuals, and then the women are the ones coming in to do the dirty work of cleaning and, and keeping house. But you can also see that the women have a lot of power or the girls have a lot of power in that traditional gender role because ultimately it's through that gender role that they are able to save the day. I thought it was particularly funny how a lot of the um, intellectual boy characters were so into being intellectual and being in these um, academic clubs that they were totally oblivious to the real world filth around them. And I think this is just another example of how Miyazaki creates really fantastic uh, female characters. Another theme that's definitely at work here is the theme of old versus new. And this is definitely something that is not only represented by, but also spurred on by the upcoming Tokyo Olympics. And one of the more powerful moments in the film when the student body comes together to kind of debate whether or not they should demolish the clubhouse, Shun makes a really beautiful point where he says, yes, we should all strive for progress and we should all um, want to embrace new ways of thinking and expand our horizons. But at the same time, we shouldn't do that at the expense of our heritage and of our history. Of course, you don't have to be so cerebral about it if you want to just enjoy it as a coming of age story. I think you definitely can. And I think it's a really great story of young love. As for animation, I thought this was absolutely beautiful. And I have to say I was really impressed by the ability to distinguish all of the different characters. Plot-wise, I think this is one of the more complicated uh, Studio Ghibli films, and this is definitely one of the Studio Ghibli films with the most uh, characters. I think the only other film I can think of from Studio Ghibli with this many characters is Palm Poco. This is definitely the film with the most human characters and I think the animators did a really beautiful job of drawing them all so distinctly that they all really feel like different people and you can tell who every single person is. I thought the soundtrack was also breathtaking. It's a little bit different than other Studio Ghibli films in that there are um, a lot of songs with actual uh, vocals and lyrics. And finally, I know I said that I was super disappointed in in Goro Miyazaki's first film, but I honestly think he redeemed himself like 110% in this film. There are a couple of big differences between From Up on Poppy Hill and uh, Tales from Earthsea. For one, From Up on Poppy Hill is a more realistic film and maybe Goro Miyazaki just wasn't ready to tackle an epic fantasy yet. The other big difference is that Goro Miyazaki didn't actually write this film, his father did, so maybe his problem is that he's a better director than he is a writer. But regardless, I thought this was a, fa a fantastic return to Studio Ghibli for him and I honestly can say I don't have a single problem with this film. I loved it that much. So those were my thoughts on From Up on Poppy Hill by Studio Ghibli and Goro Miyazaki and I would love to know what you guys think if you have seen this one. I hope you guys are super excited for my next Year of Miyazaki discussion video because I will finally be watching The Wind Rises by Hayao Miyazaki. I've heard so many fantastic things about it. Get pumped, guys. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap it up. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.